Hello everyone and welcome back to The Feeding Frenzy. The Feeding Frenzy is something worth listening to, worth reading and watching, and then lastly, but not least, worth thinking about. And it is my attempt at taking the things in my week that I found useful and sharing it with the broader community at large. With that, let's jump into this week's edition, number 19. First up is Worth Listening. Today, we have two podcasts. The first one being is the founder of Chipotle, Steve Ells, on How I Built This with Guy Raz. How I Built This is a fantastic podcast. And I wanted to share something a little bit different than what I've normally been sharing with all of you. As someone who's in their 20s, Chipotle is a staple in my diet. I probably hit it about once a week. And it's really changed the way a lot of us think about food. At least for me, I think of Chipotle as something that is healthier option so that you can have the casual aspects to get something on the go, but also just be higher quality. Listening to someone like Steve Ells who created this phenomenon and changed fast food for lack of a better term is just really fascinating to see you know, how the idea of Chipotle started and to what it's become. And one of the interesting fun facts here is that Chipotle was supposed to be a launch pad to fund a fine dining restaurant that Steve wanted to make. And naturally, that never happened just given the monster success that Chipotle has become. Next up, I return to a staple podcast in my week, which is Peter T. podcast, The Drive. This week on the podcast, he had Sarah Halberg. Some of her background here is she's the medical director at Verta Health and a physician who has spent nearly two decades treating patients with obesity and type 2 diabetes. The first half is really in the diabetes and obesity and metabolic disease category, which if you're interested in that topic, that in its own right is worth exploring for yourself. But then the second half of this podcast is where things get emotional for me. Sarah was diagnosed with stage four lung cancer suddenly. She was healthy. She didn't have any symptoms. She just basically collapsed and went to and had emergency surgery in her brain because that's where cancer had spread. And it's one of those stories that when you hear the struggle and someone who is a doctor has to fight to get care that they want with something like lung cancer at stage four is just an incredible battle. But at the end of the day, I think what she was leaning on in the conversation was being a mom is the most important thing and doing as much as she can with the time that she has left is important. And it's just one of those stories that I wasn't expecting to hit me so hard. I actually wanted to listen to it twice because I wanted to make sure I hadn't missed any of it because of by the end of it, it hits you. I think anyone can really take something away from this conversation. Moving on to worth reading. So the first article is, you can only maintain so many close friendships. This is from The Atlantic. This article actually continues on last week's article on friendship as we age. In a creative interview style, we receive wisdom from Dunbar himself, which if you're familiar, that is Dunbar's number. It is roughly how many people we can have relationships with or recognize, roughly around 120. But this article goes into a little bit more detail and I found myself coming away with thinking about friendships in a more optimistic sense. I think it can be easy for us to be cynical about the effort it takes to make friends. I think what fosters friendship is taking the leap and being vulnerable with that person. You feel the friendship is valuable or the connection that another person provides you, then you need to show it through that person. Not think that people waste your time and, and become bitter by things. And understand this is a hard thing to grasp. But here's a quote that I thought was really useful to sum up something that hit home for me. It takes about 200 hours of investment in space of a few months to move a stranger into being a good friend. This fits with our data, which suggests that close friends are very expensive in terms of time and investment to maintain. And I think the figures are guideline rather than precise. It means friendships require work. So here's the thing, and this is what I was trying to get at in my comment is it just takes work to become friends with people. That means it, as we get older, it's harder to maintain or just put in the requisite work to create a new friend because you don't have the available time to do. So if someone seems like they are worth that time, then do it is the takeaway here. But in this all, I'm really curious what people think here about friendships. 
The second article here is Seneca on grief, the key to resilience in the face of loss. An extraordinary letter to his mother. And this is from Brain Picking. For me, this is a category where stoicism has always been something that's been important to me since I've been exposed to it. Even before I've heard of the term, my dad would give me advice that I would now consider stoic. But I think it's meaningful and thought-provoking for self-reflection, especially with the categories of grief and resilience, because it's one of those things that life is going to throw curveballs and speed bumps along the way. And stoicism to me is a way of installing shock absorbers so that you can understand the impact those will have. So here's a quote from this article. With the logic of Stoicism, he goes on to confront his mother by lifting the veil of common delusion, urging her to put aside the judgment of the majority who are carried away by the surface appearance of things. He dismantles the alleged misfortune of all the elements of exile, displacement, poverty, public disgrace to reveal a person with interior stability of spirit and discipline of mind can remain happy under the direst of circumstances. So again, shock absorbers in a modern context. <laughs> Worth watching. We're going to jump back into technology here. So the video I found was why hydrogen cars... <clears throat> the video I found was why hydrogen cars flopped from Donut Media. And I found this video to be really well done. And I just enjoyed it. So early on in college, one of my professors shared the basic electrical fundamentals of automobiles. So converting horsepower and electrical power, things like that. He was under the impression that the car industry was going to be changing. And this was before Tesla had taken the world by storm. And at the time he believed the concept of hydrogen fuel cell cars. So naturally I was enamored by this idea for some time after hearing about it and just thinking about it, right? The water emitting car, <laughs> it goes exactly against all of our misconceptions about or preconceptions about what automobiles do. Instead of emitting all this CO2 and just horrible things to the environment, you have now a car that is effectively a closed loop in some sense. But naturally, everything is more complex than that. I also thought that just having this idea that you could refit fueling stations, a gas station becomes a hydrogen station, still a gas station at the end of the day. And so the buy-in there would be less because you don't have to retool your entire infrastructure to accommodate a different type of power solution like the charging stations because they don't exist. But I will leave it at a question. Maybe the idea of hydrogen cars was and still is the right idea, but it, the technology itself and the buy-in from people is too soon. So we'll see where hydrogen cars go. I'm excited still by them. The idea of a hydrogen car working and being possible future, but uh, clearly the EV world has really evolved over the last few years. So we'll see where it goes, but I thought this video was great and it explains the five key points that why this idea of hydrogen cars has not really exploded. And just as a side note here, the cover photo I used for this episode is a Hyperion hydrogen fuel cell car, which is one of the supercars that are built off of this technology, which show that it still can be done to create a high performance vehicle out of this. I think that's what has to happen in some sense where we have to start big and say, here's where it could go and then reel it back down like the EV world has done. And last up is worth pondering, which is just where I share a quote with no context and leave it there for you to think about. And ironically, this is also from Seneca, even though we already talked about him, but completely different quote. Show me that the good life doesn't consist in its length, but it's in its use. And that is, it is possible, no, entirely too common for a person who has had a long life to have lived too little. And with that, everyone, that concludes the feeding frenzy for this week. And I hope you find any or all of these things interesting to you to dive in and explore for your own. If you do end up doing so, I'd love to hear your thoughts on any and all of these things. And as always, you can head over to feedingcuriosity.net to check out this post and others much like it, including podcasts, blogs, and my unique take on 
the book summaries called Blueprints, where we are currently exploring range, why generals secede in a specialized world. And last but not least, if you are in the United States, today or this weekend is Memorial Day weekend, so I hope you have a great time celebrating and enjoy the long weekend, and I will see you all next week on the next edition.